here and therefore the role of the citizens. Remember always that we are talking about the citizens legislative conference. Legislative means that we are talking about legislations. Legislations mean that we are talking about laws. So in this process, what is our role as the citizens? Amka! Oh, Mulisa, how? Amka! Stay woke! Stay woke! When I went there, Mwishmua Kalonzo told me to remind you that you can as well say stay water. <laughs> so it can be stay, stay water or stay water, right? Depending on which one fits. So, Mwishmua, Madam Registrar of Political Parties, in this crowd is a host of very many political party leaders. And I'm sure that uh, you can identify with a number of them. And they're here because of one of the proposals in the amendments of the NADCO bills, the Political Parties Act that creates the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties. The one of the proposals is, of course, to amend that we scrap off and replace the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties with what is called the Political Parties Regulatory Authority. What does this mean? One, to political parties and also to the Office of Registrar of Political Parties. Tafadhali to pige makofi to malike madam registrar to also come and speak to us about the implications of this NADCO proposal on the Political Parties Act. Karibu. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency Honorable Kalonzo Musioka and the party leader of Waipa Democratic Movement, uh, Honorable Wadai, the minority leader in parliament, all members of parliament uh, present, and all the political party leaders present, and the citizen in this hall this afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to start by saying this is an important forum where the citizens are allowed also to ask questions to the leaders and also interact with the legal process and procedures as it is required. Uh, I'm here to talk about political parties and their role in registration in the legislative process. And I want to note that first of all, the purpose of any law anywhere in any country is first of all to articulate the rights of the citizens. Uh, two, uh, any law is supposed also to address the regulatory framework that can be there so that uh, human beings must be regulated as far as behavior is concerned. Without laws, sometimes you miss the point that you are not able to really identify with the people uh, and especially when it comes to behavior. And one of the, that regulatory process is the political behavior of Kenyans. And that's why probably the Political Parties Act was created uh, so that they bring the regulatory framework of our political parties and therefore by extension the political behavior. Law is not static. I totally agree that uh, law must adjust with the society. Uh, when the, the society changes and the circumstance changes, so should be the law. So that's why when we are discussing about the NADCOL bills and uh, the decision framework, we are cognizant that our circumstances keep changing. And uh, secondly, from an electoral practitioner point of view, every after elections, we do what we call post-election evaluation. The reason for post-election evaluation as a country is first of all to identify the gaps and two, to look at the areas that we never did very well so that we bring on board legislation framework that will address the issues that were a problem in that electoral cycle. So I'm speaking from uh, that perspective that law is not static, that law keep moving uh, depending on the society and the circumstances that are there. This very location of Mugwan um, House uh, has a rich history uh, in many things including uh, engaging and coming up with the solution that made the country move forward. But, uh, but so that I'm not really verbose, I want to really talk about the Political Parties Act 
um, and probably touch just little on uh, any other law that affect elections because I practice elections and uh, governance and especially governance of political parties. In 2003, 2001 is when we had the first political parties act bill which was sponsored, it was that particular time is funding, was on funding of political parties which was sponsored by Ford Kenya then, uh, Muscari Kobo, and it went on and on until 2007, that is when we had the first political parties act. 2007, which now delinked the office of uh, the, the legislation of this law has of course gone through very many other several changes. One or the other proper review was done in 2011, which now is created an independent uh, institution through the Political Parties Act. We are now facing another review, which are also probably uh, circumstances have changed and that's why we are saying then we need to review the Political Parties Act. But I have a few questions we ask ourselves. First of all, we understand what exactly are we fixing. That is, should be the number one question when we are reviewing the Political Parties Act. If we are fixing uh, independent and strengthening the institution, then we should look at the tenants of an independent institution. What does it uh, entail? And uh, I have a few, three or two issues I would want to bring, especially to the people who participated in NADOC uh, process, that probably when we are looking at the reform, we need to look at. And I thank uh, Opio Wadai, the uh, leader of minority, for saying that we shall work closely together, because we should create a law that is meant for posterity and helping uh, the governance of political parties and also the institution that uh, regulate those political parties. The first thing, when we appeared in Bomas, us and many other people had wanted the Office of Registrar, whether in its current form or whether in a commission, to be put in the constitution. Why? Because that is one of the tenets of constitutional independence. This office is now established under the meaning of Article 260 of the constitution, which creates and allows creation of such independent offices that uh, the, the, uh, that operationalizes the constitution. When you now bring a commission, and then we now would not fall under the Article 260, and then it doesn't fall under Chapter 15, then there the issue of constitutional independence bring a problem. Probably you may want to look at that when uh, we are progressing, so that we make sure that this particular uh, office is anchored in law. Number two, I've seen the proposals that have done uh, that have been done on the on the constitutional amendment bill in regards to Article 91 and Article Article 92, uh, which are rich and uh, the the background at which the political parties are formed. But I, I don't know what can be the problem if we just also import the, con the, the, the office itself into the, into the constitution. Because political parties are well, well, well established in the constitution. So it will be prudent if we bring the office that regulate into the, in the constitution. That will create constitutional, uh, constitutional independence. Number two, I read that the published bill, the one that was published at the Senate, uh, indicate two things. Does not connect with the current office of the Registrar of Political Parties in any way. Why? Because it doesn't provide any transitional clauses at all, at all. So meaning, uh, we have to decide, are we scrapping an institution and create another one from the scratch or do we want to transform an institution from one level to another? Are we reforming an institution? Uh, so that if that is the case, then we need to provide 
squarely a lot of transitional clauses because as it start now, uh, it's we start at risk of saying even the political parties then as they established do not exist. And even as the Office of Registrar of Political Party and all the records and assets do not exist, are we able to establish right from the crash? And I want to bring to attention that there's a lot of work that has been done to institutionalize that office and uh, a lot of money that has been used so that transitional crosses should be provided to be able to connect the office together with the commission that is being established. As a practitioner in the area, I want to tell you the infrastructure as the bill presents uh, may face a challenge, may bring a challenge. One, because uh, we are establishing a regulatory commission, but the people who are regulating are coming directly from political parties. So my wish was maybe this should be a process of where we have a selection committee, just like IBC. Then we recruit people who are completely independent and they are able to relate independently in the regulatory work. Uh, Your Excellency, I also note um, one of the concerns as a regulator is that we have removed even the regulatory function. We are creating a regulatory authority with zero regulatory function. Actually, at the section that three, the bill has removed uh, the requirement of regulation from the regulatory commission. So it creates a problem. Then what shall be the regulatory, and it, and it has the name regulatory, be doing if it doesn't have the regulatory um, ability? Political parties are very important in terms of uh, ensuring good governance and democracy in a country. Therefore, when we are establishing a framework that actually regulates them, it should therefore not uh, be short of uh, very clear structures on how then the regulation will happen. The bill also does not even provide what are the disqualification and qualification of people who shall be members of that, that commission. And uh, it also does not give clearly what will happen to the current office holders and also the staff of the, the OLPP. Uh, so in a nutshell, we have done a very comprehensive uh, response to the call for, call for memorandum to the Senate. But in a nutshell, that is some of the issues that we really need to look when we are looking at the NADOC process. Um, allow me also to talk about one or two issues on uh, j just in one minute. I know you want to come, but it just in one minute. <laughs> uh, one, I, I'm also, as a practitioner in election, there's also the election offenses amendment bill. Uh, one of the provisions there talk about uh, that it will be an offense for a, for, for a polling station official not to transmit result within two hours. But then it doesn't qualify the, some of the circumstances that can lead to delay. Some of them it's network. And uh, some people have to move from one polling station uh, all the way probably near to even near the turning center. So I want it aligned with the realities on the ground as far as election management is concerned so that you don't criminalize uh, for, a, for a, a PO who is actually one of our children. It may be your son. Because these POs are young people. And if you criminalize that you don't post the election within two hours, then it's criminal. It can be a problem to those young people. So if we, we really outline the circumstances under which then that delay can happen, it can also be very good. Finally, I have seen in one, I think it's still with the election amendment bill, that uh, an an office, uh, that's, the, the dispute resolution between the commission and the returning officers is being transported from the commission to the judiciary. I've been IBC for 10 years or more. That one will actually interfere with the electoral timelines. When you, you, the dispute between a returning officer and a candidate, to me, as I, and I, it's my considered opinion, and, uh, but I'm a practitioner and I have done that in the area, uh, should be left to the commission. 
let the commission deal with their own returning officers so that the timelines are not interfered with. When it goes to court, it can go, it can go. At what point shall we print the ballot? They pass. I, I rest my case. Asante sana, Madam Mwasiji. Registrar in Swahili, Nini. Msajili, very good. Here. <laughs> Madam Sajili kwa